Well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Oh, good. You have to do much better than thanks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We uh, come here today with very mixed feelings and emotions. We come here today at the loss of a son, brother, husband, father, friend, uncle. I mean, all of you come here today having known John in a very unique and special way. And, and there's a sense, because particularly at such a young age, uh, you know, it is a tragic loss to the family. But I think most importantly today, we come to celebrate the gift of a wonderful life. And though uh, it encapsulated in a very short period of time, uh, you know, John touched so many people in a very unique and special way. And uh, just your presence here today, you know, really shows that. And plus, we're we're live streaming to probably a million people who are watching today that, that couldn't make it. So quite a, a large group of people here today. Marie, how did you meet him? Off the, off the record, he, he married the stock of this, which is said. <laughs> so, where was the first official date? God's grace or God's sense of humor that brought you two together. If it had been a sunny day, you never would have met him. So, uh, and, and I have to say, I love the, your wedding photo right there. And I have to say, John looks a little like a deer in headlights in that photo. And you have that expression on your face. He has no clue. But you know, it, it's just as well none of us have a clue because we, we don't lock ourselves in our rooms. But you began that leap of faith. And I mean, this stuff, these last few months, he wasn't even on the readout screen then. But today, you know, you, we're reminded that that leap of faith was such a, a legacy and, and an imprint on so many different people. Our readings and our prayers of this afternoon remind us of that journey. So we begin this afternoon in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Compassionate and loving God, yours is beauty of childhood and yours is the fullness of years. Comfort us in our soul, strengthen us with hope, and breathe peace into our troubled hearts. Assure that the love we had for John was not in vain. Indeed, make it a part of the store of goodness. You're even now pointed upon him near each other's kingdom. Guide us this time of sadness with the light of your love and the strength of your compassion. Give all of us the strength and courage to face each new day. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture readings, uh, series of readings this afternoon, reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. And Paul we would call uh, uh, a chief uh, uh, rabbi or bishop in today's world. And his writings were a way of sharing that wisdom with the different communities. It's almost like a, a, a dear Abbey. The community in Corinth would write to Paul as their leader, you know, how do we put the words and teachings of Jesus Christ into practice? And, and he would write them a letter. And uh, Kathy, uh, why don't you share the letter with us this afternoon? A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. There are both heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the brightest of the heavenly is one kind and that of the earthly another. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is a spiritual one. 
someone to say a little bit of something about John. Um, so my brother John was loved by all. He was a good father, husband, brother, uncle, son, and friend. My mom and dad had five sons and three daughters. He had so he had four brothers by birth, but so many friends also loved he called brothers um, as well. He was always super generous and always trying to help family and friends. He was a hard worker and talented in many trades. If you needed something built or fixed, you could call John and he would help you out. He was a collector, so many of you know if you needed something, anything, he usually had two or three to give you and usually walked away with more than what you wanted, right? He had a great sense of humor, a huge heart, and he gave the best bear hugs. Back in the day, his bear hugs took your breath away. He loved everyone, and everyone loved him, and we still do love him. But Fred said when they, they made John, they broke the mold. He was one of, the, one of a kind, and that's true. His smile and his laugh will certainly be missed. He went to, went to heaven on Saturday to join my mom and dad, Maria, Michael, Patty, and Sarah. And we believe in Jesus, and we believe that we will see him again in heaven. Until then, he'll always be in our hearts and thoughts. Marie and John, you have the strength and the love that will help carry you through these difficult times. I think if we keep him close in our hearts, um, we'll know that he's only a thought away. I do believe God has his loving arms around John and around all of us. Um, my brother always said, love you 70 or love you more when he said goodbye to me. Um, fist bumps and love you 70 or love you more was his way of saying goodbye. He didn't want to say goodbye but we know that he's at peace now, and he's not in pain anymore. So rest in peace, brother. Love you, 70. Love you, 70. Love you, 70. Kathy, thank you very much. Very beautifully done. Now, now the kids growing up, Kathy, who gave your mom and dad the hardest time? I'd say one of the five brothers. That was <laughs> 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 no, Please remain seated for the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you. And then I shall come back to take you with me that where I am you also may be. You know the way that leads where I go. Lord, said Thomas, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I know first and uh, foremost, uh, this afternoon, I send all of the prayers and sympathy to the John's family, especially to Marie, to Johnny, to just all of you that are here today. Our readings and our gospel today remind us of the journey. And uh, when someone we love and care about dies, I don't think it matters the age, I don't think it matters the circumstance. First and foremost, it brings out different emotions. And emotions are very mixed and varied at death. We live in such a high-tech world today. Uh, most of my ministry was spent in the city of Boston. I was nine years at Boston Medical Center and my 18th year with hospice. You know, we think there's something wrong. We check ourselves in the hospital. They fix us. We come up the front door good as new. Uh, Johnny said to me, us, life isn't quite that simple. And despite all the technology, all of the things we have in our world today, we still don't have the power of life and death. And you know, we get angry because we live in a world where we want control over everything. And, you know, here in the Boston area, we live in the medical center of the universe. At these last uh, two and a half years, uh, we've realized that a microscopic virus can debilitate our entire world. You know, and we get angry. But sometimes we feel relief. Relief that the person's journey is at an end, and they finally need peace. And so often today, we bring out uh, all of those different conflicting emotions. Uh, in hospice, the uh, first question I'm asked uh, from families uh, usually is, when will my loved one die? And it's the only question I can ever answer because I've yet to figure it out. I've had services this year for our youngest patient at five months old, my oldest at 103. You know, people die when they die. 
But John's death reminds us how temporary, how fragile human life is. So today we bring up all of the, the different memories. Secondly, we remember. And the memories will be different for each and every one of you. Uh, Johnny, why don't you come up and share some, some things about Dad? Just remember, this is a G audience. Okay. <laughs> father was the strongest person I knew no matter what it was. He was always the one I looked up to and I wanted to be just like him. Whether it was his loving, caring side or his tough, put you to work side, I can never be more thankful for a better father figure. His loving, caring side showed me there's nothing more important than family and being together with the ones you love. Every time there's family around, it's a good time. And my father always made sure that was the case. He could make you smile even if you were having the worst day, and that was because his love and care was genuine. His tough side taught me to be strong. No matter what obstacle thrown my way, I will always toughen out and power through, and that's thanks to my dad. Like I said, he was the strongest person I knew, and without him as my father growing up, I wouldn't be who I am today. I pray that I can be half the man my father was. Although I am super confused and scared about you being gone, I know you are watching over me and while protecting us. I promise I will take care of her and be the man you taught me to be and make you proud. I'll never be okay with the fact that I don't have my father anymore. And I'll always miss you, but you taught me to be strong, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Love you, Sunday Pops. Save a seat up there for me. <coughs> Johnny, thank you very much. Very, very beautifully uh, done. Jennifer? feels in himself nature. Not his father, but his mother stirs within him, and he becomes immortal with her immortality. From time to time, she claims kindredship with us, and some globule from our veins steals up into our own. I am the autumnal sun. With autumn gales, my race is run. When will the hazel put forth its flowers, or the grape ripen under my bowers? When will the harvest or the hunter's moon Turn midnight into mid-noon. I am all fear and yellow into my core mellow. The mast is dropping within my woods. The winter is lurking within my moods. And the rustling of the withered leaf is the constant music of my grief. Heather, thank you uh, very much. Anyone uh, have some special memories or thoughts they'd like to share about John? Yeah, come on, come on. I'm gonna ask, usually I would go down with the mic, but I wonder if we can see you and hear you. You can actually come up here. I don't know what to say about Johnny Paul that if you knew him that you don't already know. His big heart and how he was always there to help everyone no matter what the situation will never be matched. He was loud, vibrant soul, screaming, hey, hey, and seeing you, and then grabbing you and giving you a big bear hug. He truly was always happy. Every time he came anywhere, he showed up with drinks, food, chairs, tables, or whatever else he had in his truck that he found that day, bought, or acquired. Who knows where it came from, but he always left it there. As long as I can remember, JB was right there with me. From early memories, taking us to the beach, to Nantasket, building sand castles. He always used to bring those can wraps to wrap his beer. So it said like Coca-Cola, but it was like Budweiser. He used to show up at Christmas and birthday parties with trash bags full of gifts, pool floats, those water balloon slingshots. He had rockets, we all had rockets, and we used to just lose at Elm Bank all the time. He taught me how to plow snow when I was probably 11. Middle of the night saying, hey, want to drive? Then laughing as we keep crashing the snowbank, holding my foot on the gas. It was always an adventure, and he was always laughing. He gave me his boat when I was 17 years old, which I still have today. I even caught a fish on it this morning. Uh, 
It was a summer day. We were working, and all of a sudden he saw a boat on the side of the road, pulled over, and next thing you know, the guy was taking a tube and some skis out of his garage, and we hooked it up, and we were on the lake. <laughs> Felt like that whole summer we were there every day. Even Mitchell and Chad came from Arizona, and Uncle John was just ripping us in circles, laughing us, and threw us off. It's crazy that was over 25 years ago. I learned a lot from him. I worked with him. We had a lot of fun. Lunches at Mexican restaurants with Uncle John walking out with a hat that was on the wall. <laughs> truly, the memories are truly endless. Not only was he my family, he was one of my favorite people. My heart is truly broken. I will never understand why, but I do believe he's surrounded by loved ones. No matter how much we all want him to stay, he's in a better place. I love you, Uncle John. Any others like to share some thoughts and memories? Well, excellent. And in heaven, the plowing is always perfect. <laughs> and, uh, you never clipped a mirror or something? <laughs> <laughs> the memories uh, will be different for each and every one of you because uh, John related to you in a unique and special way. Within the, the Hebrew Scriptures is a beautiful uh, passage of teaching. Though our ancestors' bodies lie peacefully away, their virtues, their legacy, their heritage live on and on. They live on with their families, they live on with their friends and community. And all of these different memories, whether it's a, a rainy day with, a, with an umbrella, a pool, a pool, bowling, or, or whatever, for a snowstorm coming up, for any of those things, will always trigger those memories, that imprint that John left. And finally, when someone we love and care about dies, John's death reminds us all of us will die. We don't know the time, we don't know the place, and we don't know the circumstance. Now, the Gospel story today uh, has us being introduced to Thomas. And uh, you know, the last 2,000 plus years, Thomas has borne the name Doubting Thomas because he missed the first resurrection appearance of Jesus. Why he missed it, no one knows. I mean, having uh, lived and studied in, in Jerusalem, the streets are very confusing. Could have got lost. Uh, could have helped a woman get some water at a well. I mean, there are a million uh, normal reasons. Uh, the apostles may not have told him there was a meeting. There's so many normal reasons that uh, Thomas missed that meeting. And maybe he should, he should, he should be called Thomas everyone. Because in many, in many ways, it's like all of us. But the moral of the story today is, not that he doubted, but the fact that he came to believe. But he needed a little extra pride. And I think you touched on it really in your, in your remarks, that uh, this is an event that doesn't always make sense, we don't understand, it conflicts us in so many ways. And uh, in many ways we're in the same position as Thomas. We need that little extra to come to believe. Now for Thomas, Jesus had to come through the door, and Thomas physically had to, to put the, his hands in the wounds. But for us, you know, our faith is challenged in so many different fronts. And I think, uh, you know, John's uh, passing really reminds us of how fragile human life is. And maybe like Thomas, you know, we need that little extra party, but he came to believe. And that's maybe the most difficult challenge for us today. When I was in the city, I had a grammar school and a high school. And I gave the ninth grade an assignment one year. What is a saint? And I, uh, the ninth grade came up, they came up with the best definition of a saint that I've come across. Go find it in a theology book or philosophy book. But they said a saint is a person who does the best they can with what they've got. And you know that's not a bad definition. Because today we pay tribute to a saint. Not a perfect person. But if you look at John's life, each step along the way, despite the obstacles, despite the challenges, he did the best he could with what he had. And you know, maybe that's uh, his final and uh, best gift to all of us here today. Because today we have a chance to look at our lives. What are all the things that have transpired in your life or my life that have brought us here today? And where will we be two weeks, two months, 20 years from now? At the time of your death or my death, what will our life have said to the world? And will people be able to say about us, we did the best we could with what we had? Because if you think about it, God can ask no more of any of us than to do that with our lives. We've heard the word of God. We've had a chance to reflect upon that word. 
Now we join in prayer for John. We sponsor our prayers this afternoon. This Lord hear our prayer. We pray for John. When baptism was given the pleasure of eternal life, and he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our brother John, like the body of Christ, the Eucharist, that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our deceased relatives and friends. We pray for all those people who are good and kind to John in his life, that they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of us who have gathered here this afternoon in faith that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our now normally we would pray the Lord's Prayer to end the series of prayers. And I'm going to ask that you do that at some point a little later today. Uh, but I know John was a uh, Patriots fan. So I, so I told Marie, well someone must have the score. But, you know, who's the quarterback today? Exactly. Okay. So I had to come up with, I told Maria, come up with a Patriots prayer. <laughs> our Patriots, which are our 11, hallowed be thy game. Our game be won, their score be none. On turf, as we score, be seven. Give us today no daily red card, and forgive us our lost passes and interceptions, as we forgive those who lose passes against us. Lead us not into retaliation. But deliver us from penalties. But three is the kickoff, the power, and scorer through Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft. Without Brady, Gronk, or Mac, forever and ever the Super Bowl. Amen. 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 I'll deny it's on, it's on camera. <laughs> Rachel, why don't you share a, a, a scripture reading a few thoughts? reading of the Gospel, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I just want to read something that reminded me of Uncle John. Some souls instantly click. Whether your family, best friends, soulmates, or something so special, the words can't quite explain it. You accept this person for everything they are, and they would never let you be anything other than your beautiful, imperfect self. These are the souls that you encounter and just know in the very first moment that you're su supported and you're supposed to cross paths. Their presence makes you feel safe and calm, like your home whenever you're with them. They are without a doubt the most special person you've had, and it's a privilege to love. No distance, time, or person could come between the bond you share. Their kindness, softness, sincerity, and unconditional love makes you feel like a better person because life is simply better than them. Whatever form they may come in, these souls are your happy place, your comfort, your sunshine, your everything. And you genuinely have a hard time imagining life without them. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Rachel, very nicely done. Thank you. Let us pray. The death of someone we love and care about is like the death of part of us. No one else will ever call out from within us. Quite the same responses, the same feelings or actions or ideas. Their death is an ending to one part of the story. Lord, as we look back over John's life, we ask what we have received, what we can appropriate and continue on in our own lives, what must be laid to rest. Our love for John reminds us that our sharing in one another's lives brings both support and pain. Our being part of him reminds us of our own mortality, but that your love is enduring. We thank you that a love for John draws us together and gives us a new appreciation of one another and of the beauty and fragility of relationships which mirror your grace and goodness to us. Lord, time's tide may wash his footprints on the shore, but not our love for him, but the influence of his life upon our own the ways in which there ought to be a sign for us of those things which really matter, which are eternal. Nieces and nephews were right. 
Do you ever slip you a few bucks every once in a while? <laughs> that's that's the job. <laughs> I don't know. I, I suspect you may have been amongst the top. Again, uh, you know, all of all of the praise and sympathy we read to you and to Johnny to the family. What a nice group of people uh, here today, and uh, it shows a lot about the character yeah. of your husband. Loving God, God of all beginnings and endings, we are so grateful to share our lives with John. We know that you welcome John to heaven with your words, well done, good and faithful servant. Comfort us as we mourn his loss. Support us in the days and weeks ahead. John, we say to you in the midst of our sorrow and loss that we are grateful that you live your life among us. We are grateful for your quiet gentleness and for your firm resolve to live life and to die on your own terms. We take joy and relief in knowing that your journey has ended. We ask you now for forgiveness for any of the ways that we may have hurt you in this life. And we forgive you for any of the ways that you may have hurt us. We release you now into the everlasting arms. May your passage be swift, may you know wholeness and peace now throughout all eternity. The Lord be with you. May you go from this place knowing that John, the one you love, is now at peace. May you trust the one who sustains us all will hold you and keep you during the darkest of days. And may you re-enter your lives, infused with the desire and power to bless everyone and everything you touch. And may God's blessings be upon you all, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our service is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thank you. Oh, sure. Um, everybody, if you'd like to, welcome to go to the BFW, one thirty-five. Maurice extended welcome to the BFW, Route 135 in Natick. There you can finish up the game and also share some of the stories you could not say publicly here. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.